The Night Beat starts right now. We begin with yet another COVID-19 death confirmed in San Antonio in Bear County. The second death comes days after the first was confirmed this weekend. This is a second woman to die from the illness here in Bear County. The first was a woman in her 80s, and today's death was a woman in her 40s. She was pronounced dead today after receiving treatment at University Hospital. St. Luke Catholic Church issued a statement on their Facebook page saying, quote, it is now with a heavy heart that we inform you that our employee passed away this Tuesday morning from her battle with the virus, end quote. Tonight, the city and county stay home, work safe emergency ordinance officially begins, hoping to slow down the rise in cases, slow down this graph that you're seeing rising. Here's the latest track since Bear County confirmed its first COVID-19 case 11 days. There are now 69 confirmed cases in our area. 32 of those are travel related. 10 cases are classified as close contact. 18 are community transmission. Nine are under investigation and two cases ended in death. Metro Health's lab has processed more than 460 tests amid this pandemic. And an update from the University Health System. They are now processing samples of COVID-19 in their lab with help from UT Health San Antonio partners. The processing started today on a limited basis. Samples processed at the University Health System lab will be for our healthcare workers and for patients at University Hospital. The goal is to get healthcare workers who test negative back to work more quickly, and the sickest patients in the hospital will get their diagnosis sooner. And amid all of this, it's the last thing that many of us would think of, but thieves seem ready to cash in on the coronavirus fears. Tonight, local law enforcement getting ahead of potential scams that they believe will likely emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic. The warning going to the most vulnerable in these types of scams, the elderly. The night team's Patty Santos tells us investigators are already shaking down thieves, offering fake cures. Police in our area on high alert looking for COVID-19 scams targeting their communities. Our demographic uh, has a large portion of, of folks, uh, I would say over 60. Council Hills police say seniors are most often the targets for opportunistic thieves. I think we'll see uh, certain scams surrounding uh, likely cures or testing kits, home testing kits, things of that nature. In times of uncertainty, people will kind of grasp at any hope they can get a hold of. The Texas Attorney General warns of online scams. Don't give any personal information on the web, phone, or to a person who knocks on your door. Universal City Police echoes that warning. If someone comes to your door, especially because we're really practicing, I guess, the social distancing, you should be opening the door anyway, and if you have to, uh, I would let them know now is not the time to pass on any information. Some states have reported scams where thieves are posing to be officials selling cures or test kits door to door. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has not authorized any test that is available to purchase for testing at home for COVID-19. We're all aware uh, that if if the hospitals are backed up, they're not going to start sending the only resources they have out into the field. It's time to be vigilant. Bernie Police warns of grocery delivery scams on its website, reminding people to safeguard bank information, look for reputable businesses. Anyone offering free shopping help to seniors should also be vetted. It's where folks are offering to go out and do the shopping for you, one, so you're not exposed, two, because there's lines and things like that, and then they're just keeping the money and not coming back. Don't be pressured to do anything. Ask the company for a callback number or for information in the mail. Seniors are also encouraged to call the police non-emergency number for the city they live in if they have questions about a company or a product they're being offered. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Meanwhile, the city of New Braunfels announcing they will now implement the stay at home work safe order. It takes effect tomorrow at 1159 p.m. and will remain in effect until the mayor says otherwise. This order is similar to San Antonio and Bear counties. The city and county's order takes effect in less than two hours. We received a lot of questions involving call centers. The city today announcing call centers would be allowed to operate as long as they're practicing social distancing techniques. We also had the mayor involved in a discussion here at our KSAT 12 studios during the six o'clock news. He reacted to a statement made by the lieutenant governor, Dan Patrick, on Fox News last night. Let's get back to work. Let's get back to living. Let's be smart about it. Uh, and those of us who are 70 plus, we'll, we'll take care of ourselves, but don't sacrifice the country. Your reaction to the lieutenant governor? Well, it's, it's very easy uh, for someone of power and privilege 
and with a government health plan to make a callous statement like that. Um, you know, but what Dan Patrick is learning now is something that most Americans have known for a very long time, which is that a single health event can turn catastrophic. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're seeing play out all over the country, in fact, with our own economy. It has become a catastrophic issue. And so what I would say is that here in San Antonio I, as mayor, no one is disposable. We're going to make sure that no one has to be sacrificed. We're going to protect everyone's lives. And meanwhile, the Bear County Commissioner's Court approved $5.25 million worth of loans and grants to help out local small businesses that are losing money. Loans would be zero interest with payments deferred for at least the next few months. These loans are being distributed through a company called Lift Fund, a local nonprofit. If you're a business owner interested in applying or learning more, here's the number to call 888 215 2373. A stay at home ordinance will go into effect tonight at 1159. Grocery stores are labeled essential and will be open during the order. Mayor Nirenberg asked people not to hoard, saying the food supply chain remains healthy. Yet within hours of the order, people flooded to the stores. Our Courtney Friedman shows us how long how long those lines are. Customers separated only by their carts. This long line outside HEB near Brook Hollow and 281. And take a look at this scene in Leon Springs this morning. The line here so long, it wrapped around to the back of the building. The chirping of birds signaled the start of a long day ahead here as well at a store on Military and Zarsamora. Forget six feet, these customers are standing right next to each other. The line snaking around twice in front of the store. Our own Katrina Weber was there speaking with customers. Despite the size of the crowd, no one who I talked to said that they were panic shopping. Many people saying they were standing in line just to pick up a few of the basics. The line was too long for David Gonzalez, who was just trying to pick up chorizo. My grand three year old grandson likes chorizo with, with egg. There was also another item on the list. Well, the toilet paper. But with the length of the line, Gonzalez instead went to try his luck at another store. HEB has changed hours to help restock shelves and even limited items to keep people from hoarding. There's also a curbside service, but the earliest order isn't available until early April. HEB says there will continue to be products available. They're only running out because so many people are buying all at once. Again, grocery stores are an essential business and you'll be allowed to visit the store if you need an item during the stay home work safe order. At the moment, the declaration is set to end on April 9th. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Now we reached out to HEB in a statement. They say, quote, our stores are putting forth a tremendous effort to ensure social distancing, keeping customers and HEB partners six feet apart while in store. Because of these safety measures monitored at all times by our COVID action partners, at times we have to limit the number of customers in store, end quote. More schools being added to the list of extended closures now. Comal ISD and the New Braunfels ISD extending their closures until April 24th. They're added to the already long list of closures. We continue to update on KSAT.com. Lavernia ISD also extending their closure till April 21st. Stress, anxiety, depression, they're all issues you or someone in your community may be feeling during this time. The Ecumenical Center is hoping to help with a phone call. The agency is scheduling wellness conversations. The call would connect you with a mental health professional while you're at home with no out-of-pocket expenses. To schedule the conversation, just call the center between 8 in the morning and 5 at night, Monday through Saturday. The number to call is 210-616-0885. The service will run through April 10th and may be extended. The most vulnerable in our community, no doubt, impacted during the coronavirus pandemic. That includes patients currently going through dialysis. The night team's Jaffney Gray spoke with one patient who has made it her mission to uplift those who need encouraging the most. The one thing that we have like is each other and we can't even hug each other like we can't comfort each other. Four year dialysis patient Candace Allen says since the start of the coronavirus pandemic, she's seen the stress levels rise of other patients at the clinic she goes to and the morale go down. Doctors say people on dialysis are at a higher risk of developing COVID-19 because of their weak immune system. Their risk of having a serious complication 
which could be life-threatening, is much higher. Allen says the doctors at her clinic have made adjustments to protect patients and to calm their worries. Well, they're constantly uh, wiping down the machines as they usually are, but everybody has a mask on, everybody changed masks, they change gloves. Even if they're going to like do their blood pressure, they're taking the mask off and putting it on. Allen, whose kidneys failed over four years ago, says she too has had to make adjustments. I wear two or three masks at one time sometimes, depending on... Where I'm at, I try to stay away from people. I keep, I'm constantly washing my hands with antibacterial soap. But she says her biggest concern is knowing other patients are struggling to get the essentials they need due to the growing fear in the community. It's easy for everybody to say, oh, let me get this toilet paper. Let me grab that. Let me grab it. But you're not thinking about those that are sick, those that either the elderly or special needs children, special needs adults, how do they feel? You feeling like you don't have anybody because everyone's hysterical. She says that she hopes more people be more considerate for the vulnerable during this pandemic. She has this uplifting message for others. God brought us this far. He's not going to leave us nor forsake us. So you have to keep going. If it's for nothing else, you live to fight another day. Jaffney Gray, Case at 12 News. Live to fight another day. Still ahead with more to go and delivery orders, what you should consider doing so germs don't end up on your doorstep. Those tips coming up. And a San Antonio couple took the trip of a lifetime, but now they're stuck there due to the coronavirus. We hear from them coming up. And plus, San Antonio police are looking for the driver of a sports car who may have been involved in a deadly crash and an update in a deadly shooting case at a hotel in San Antonio. Next on the night beat. And new on the night beat, a deadly wreck leading to the search for a driver in a sports car. It happened on Loop 1604 near Tradesman Drive just before 7 o'clock tonight. San Antonio police say an SUV carrying three people lost control, hit the wall, and then rolled over. One of the men died in the crash. Another was taken to the hospital in critical condition. The third passenger identified as a woman and was also taken to the hospital. A witness says someone in a sports car was involved in the crash and they sped off. Police suspect road rage played a factor in the wreck. And tonight we've learned the name of a man that police say was shot and killed by his wife in a Northside motel room. A spokesperson for Customs and Border Protection confirming the victim was a U.S. Border Patrol agent named John Marburger. He'd worked as an agent for 21 years. The shooting happened at the La Quinta Inn in Suites off of North Loop 1604. Police say Sherry Marburger called 911 this morning saying a man in her room had been shot. That man later identified as her husband, John, was rushed to the hospital where he later died. Police say it appeared the two were the only two in the room at the time. Sherry arrested and charged with murder. A man killed in an officer involved shooting now identified as well. The medical examiner confirming 46 year old Carlos Delgado was the man killed. Police say he was holding a pickaxe when he confronted officers yesterday in the 500 block of Glendale Avenue. Officers were called to the home for a family disturbance call. As countries across the world respond to the pandemic with shutdowns and by limiting travel, thousands of Americans are stuck abroad, including a San Antonio couple. They're stranded in Peru. Tonight, Tiffany Huertas tells us how their trip of a lifetime took an unplanned turn. I just asked her if she wanted to come to Peru since Peru didn't have any coronavirus uh, cases. This uh, San Antonio uh, couple uh, traveled to uh, Peru on March 8th. Uh, uh, Jose Angel Hinojosa and Siul Cortez traveled to Machu Picchu, one of the seven wonders of the world, and that's when he popped the big question. Siul said yes, but the story doesn't end there. They are now stranded in Peru. I didn't think this was going to happen since so the virus was on the other side of the world. Peru has 416 COVID-19 cases, according to John Hopkins University and Medicine. On March 15th, the country's president issued a 15-day nationwide state of emergency and closed the borders. I was kind of nervous. Uh, I was thinking about my job. The couple says they called the U.S. Embassy in Peru and they left their information with them, but they haven't heard back. The U.S. Embassy in Lima, Peru, says it continues to look for options for U.S. citizens. Today, flights from Peru to the U.S. were canceled. Peru State Department advises people in this situation to check with their airline because while the country is on lockdown, some flights are being let in and out on a case-by-case -case basis. 
The embassy says U.S. citizens should stay in their lodging until further notice. For now, the couple is adjusting and taking precautions. They are scheduled to return to San Antonio on April 3rd, but they say they know things could change. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Take a look outside with live cam right now. 72 degrees out there. Beautiful shot with Sky 12 at the Tower Life building. Looks like it. It Never is. San Antonio. Yeah, I love that shot. Warm one today, Adam. Yeah, some would even say hot, especially for this time of year, considering the average high is 76 and we made it to 91. So it was the warmest day since October 20th. How about that? It's going to get even hotter as we get into tomorrow. So let's start with a look at our weather headlines and talk about what's really going to be affecting us here in the coming days. Sunny and hot again tomorrow. Friday night, we'll have a cold front move through. And that's really going to cool us down for the upcoming weekend. But unfortunately, rain chances are looking pretty minimal. Right now in the Panhandle, we're in the 70s, low to mid 70s. Amarillo, even Lubbock at 75 there. Uh, those were the high temperatures today, right? So a big difference from the Panhandle all the way down into South Texas, where we were largely in the lower 90s. I mean, even 94 in Hondo, 92 Uvalde. 91 here in San Antonio, New Braunfels and Austin both hit 92. So definitely feeling the warm air today. Right now, we're already down in the 50s in parts of the hill country. Look at that. Kerrville 59, Fredericksburg at 57. Drier air is in place, especially along and west of I-35. And that drier air cools off more efficiently. So let's take a look at our temperature trend, and then we'll talk more about those dew points. Tomorrow's going to be even hotter. 94 degrees for the high temperature, sunshine all day. I think we'll be just three degrees shy of the record in the afternoon. Thursday and Friday, right near 90, and then that Friday night cold front hits. And boom, temperatures basically get put back to average for this time of year in the mid to upper 70s. So dry line dropped in and it stalled out, and there's a huge difference in moisture content across South Texas. It is dry and comfortable west of I-35. Then you get into the coastal plain and it's downright muggy with dew points in the low 70s. Now I do anticipate uh, lack of humidity for the most part as we go through the day tomorrow. That will be locally and west of I-35. Quiet weather across the state. Nothing to really talk about otherwise, other than a little small narrow band of clouds that moved through parts of South Texas and the coastal bend earlier today. That's it. Our next weather maker is actually bringing some good moisture to the Pacific Northwest and parts of California that like to see it, especially this time of year before they get into what's often a dry summer. That's our next system. It's not going to be a big heavy hitter for us, and it's going to take some time to get here. Big Blue H is still in charge of our weather. A big upper level high, it's centered over Mexico, close enough to be influencing us. So another warm day tomorrow, warmest we've seen yet this year, mid 90s. And then as our pattern shifts and this upper disturbance skirts just north of us into the weekend, that'll draw that cooler air southward. And unfortunately though, with this shift in the weather pattern, I don't anticipate a big a big chance of rain with it. I mean, we did get lucky. Don't get me wrong. Over the weekend, we had some good rainfall, but I get greedy and I like more, right? Especially when we're in a drought. So looking at the rain chances, I think our best is maybe a 20 to 30% chance. That would be Friday night, Saturday morning. And then again, into the early part of next week, there's a lot of uncertainty, but we could have a few chances of rain. I just not getting my hopes up right now. It's not that kind of a pattern. So tomorrow morning, a pleasant start, 56. And then we warm up quickly, 85 by noon, 94 and sunny into the afternoon. Thursday and Friday, we'll have those typical low morning clouds that we often see, followed by afternoon sunshine right near 90. And there's that cooler weather for the weekend with high temperatures back down into the mid to upper 70s and just that 20% chance of rain here and there, especially next week. Tomorrow's going to be a doozy. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks so much, Adam. All right. Well, let's talk about a message from San Antonio to Australia. Yeah, and we're talking about a lot of guys, including Patty Mills, who represents the Australian national team in the Olympics, as well as Greg Popovich, who's scheduled to represent the men's U.S. basketball team. When we come back here, it is more about what happens now that the Tokyo Olympics have been postponed. Not canceled, postponed. Patty Mills with an inspiring message today, and is Pop committed for 2021? Coming up. Hi everyone, 
I'm coming to you from my home here in San Antonio, Texas, but we have been self-isolated for the past almost two weeks. I know everyone back home is doing it tough right now, but I hope you are all safe and also staying at home. An international appeal spurs star Patty Mills with a message to his fellow countrymen in Australia now that the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo have officially been postponed in big board sports. After getting a pretty strong heads up on Monday, the president of the International Olympic Committee, Thomas Bach, and the Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, confirmed today that the 2020 game scheduled for this summer in Tokyo have been postponed until 2021. That was revealed during a conference call today in light of the COVID-19 pandemic and that the postponement will not be longer than the summer of 2021. First of all, once again, I confirmed with the IOC's President Bach that there will be no cancellation of the Tokyo Olympics or Paralympics. Furthermore, as the host of the Tokyo Olympics, taking into consideration the current situation for the athletes, the athletes of the world, for them to be able to compete in the best environment, also for the Games to be one which is safe and worry-free for spectators, I asked if it would be possible to consider postponing the Games for approximately a year. I got an answer from President Bach that he agreed 100%. We agreed that we would hold the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics by the summer of 2021. Speaking from his home here in San Antonio, Spurs guard Patty Mills with words of encouragement for his fellow Australian athletes in wake of today's decision to postpone the 2020 Games. Patty was preparing to represent Australia in the 2020 Games, but like most athletes around the world, is sequestered for the time being due to the outbreak of the coronavirus. In this video posted on his Twitter account, Patty supporting the Australian Olympic Committee and their proactive approach in handling this unprecedented crisis. If someone was to ask me if there was a call to action, I would say this. Whether you are an Olympic athlete, any athlete, or just someone that likes to participate in sports to stay fit and healthy, please stay at home and keep your distance. The better we can control this virus, the better we can look after each other and the better us athletes will be able to prepare to represent you once the Tokyo Olympics arrive. Tokyo together. Now that the Tokyo Olympics are officially postponed, Spurs head coach Greg Popovich remains committed to coaching Team USA's men's basketball team in 2021. That's according to USA Basketball Managing Director Jerry Colangelo. Early this year, Colangelo and Pop announced a 44-man preliminary roster that includes three Spurs, but not all that is in flux. Some encouraging news, Mavs owner Mark Cuban believes that the NBA will begin play again in mid-May, although without fans. That's what he told WFAA-TV. If that's the case, the NBA will be the first league to return to action since shutdown back on March the 12th and would help serve as a distraction to the international pandemic. With the city and county, it's ordered to stay at home, work safe beginning tonight at 1159. There have been some confusion as to what we are allowed to do when exercising outside. That confusion hit the local golf courses this morning went up until the mayor and county judges order a lot of folks are still hitting the links i think it's important but i think we all need to be very uh, cautious and 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 really follow the the rules of what's going on because uh we don't know enough about what's going on yet so uh, to my point i get out and try to try to walk or or, or do something it'd be nice to have the the, the courses open but everybody's got to got to apply by the rules a check with City Hall this morning reveals golf courses will be allowed to stay open during the stay at home work safe order. Even though the San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremonies are called off, how you can still help raise money for nonprofits next. The San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony scheduled for March the 28th has been postponed until February of next year, but their online auction continues today through April the 3rd to raise money for the nonprofit organization, including everything from sports memorabilia to vacations right now at sanantoniosports.org. $400,000 worth of items, um, all at bargain prices. So as people are sitting at home wondering what to do, uh, go to sanantoniosports.org register for the auction and you'll be doing a great job to help our kids in San Antonio and probably get some really, really good deals. Pro football coverage.
Powered by Davis Law Firm. There you go. While every other major sport in the world is on hold, the NFL continues to conduct their off-season business. Today, the Carolina Panthers released quarterback Cam Newton as the team's number one selection overall in the 2011 draft. That's even after Newton passed his physical in Atlanta after having foot surgery that forced him to miss most of last season. His release ends a nine-year career with the Panthers, where he was the 2015 NFL MVP. But after Carolina signed former Saints backup Teddy Bridgewater to a three-year $63 million deal, the handwriting was on the wall. The Panthers also traded Kyle Allen to the Washington Redskins after signing former XFL quarterback P.J. Walker as Bridgewater's backup. So the NFL can still do business. They're just not doing it on the field. They're doing it right. off the field right now. And they're even changing up how they're going to do the draft. We'll have more on that for you coming up tomorrow. All right. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. Still ahead on the night beat. Ordering takeout is still allowed. But what should you do as soon as you get the containers that the food comes in? The tips to consider as we make our way through the coronavirus pandemic. And President Donald Trump setting a deadline when it comes to getting business back open. The struggle on Capitol Hill. Next on the Night Beat. Tonight, Congress w still without a deal on that massive $2 trillion stimulus bill to help jumpstart the economy. This is President Trump sets a timeline for businesses to be back online. It's not months, but a matter of weeks. ABC's Alex Prisha has more from Washington. As COVID-19 spreads through the country, President Trump warning cautionary restrictions may affect the economy to the point of no return. The president now saying he wants the U.S. open for business by Easter, 20 days from now. Easter is a very special day for many reasons. For me, for a lot of, a lot of our friends, that's a very special day. And what a great timeline this would be. And on Capitol Hill, lawmakers still struggling to reach a deal on a $2 trillion bill to rescue an economy in freefall. The clock has run out. The buzzer is sounding. There are lots of good things here, but we all know that we must do these things. Both sides hopeful and the markets responding to their optimism. But it's a different story for the American workforce. According to Morgan Stanley, 3.4 million people filed for unemployment last week. That's nearly five times more than the highest week ever. People in this industry that tend to live paycheck to paycheck, not having like even one is detrimental to your rents, to your car payments, to just everything, honestly. People who get paid by the hour hit hard. Same for small business owners. Brian Morin's pizza shop in New Jersey has been in the family for over 25 years. He was forced to take out a $50,000 loan to help his employees get through the crisis. We can't risk laying off our employees and we can't risk them not having a paycheck. Big businesses also crippled. The airlines, cruise lines, hotels. Desperation felt across the country. A stimulus deal could help that. But right now in Washington, there is none. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Governor Greg Abbott praising the Texas medical community and residents who have helped contribute personal protective equipment to help doctors treat patients. Due to their efforts and the creation of a medical supply chain strike force, the governor says Texas will soon begin to receive more than a million surgical masks per week. He also issued a new executive order directing hospitals to submit daily capacity reports and directing private labs testing for COVID-19 to submit daily testing figures to the state health department. He also wants to be sure everyone is practicing social distancing. On my travel to this location today, I was surprised at how many vehicles I saw on the road. It was clear to me that we may not be achieving uh, the level of compliance that is needed. That's why I've said before, I remain flexible in my statewide standard. And I look at data multiple times a day. I get advice from the medical profession multiple times a day. And we will continue to evaluate based upon all the data whether or not there needs to be heightened standard and stricter enforcement. Stay tuned for what the governor decides. Meanwhile, several auto companies are switching gears on production to help in the fight against the coronavirus. Ford partnering with 3M to create air purifying respirators for healthcare workers. The company also working with GE Healthcare to produce more ventilators and with the United Auto Workers Union to assemble protective plastic face shields. General Motors, Fiat Chrysler and Tesla also joining the effort. GM assisting Ventec Life Systems to create ventilators. 
Fiat Chrysler plans to produce up to a million protective face masks a week to donate to hospitals, police and emergency workers. And Tesla donating 1,000 ventilators to the state of California. Taking a look now at how the coronavirus pandemic is affecting other countries. In Madrid, Spain, Spanish state-run funeral services are no longer able to collect the bodies of coronavirus patients as they lack the necessary protective equipment. So instead, a public ice rink has been converted to house the hundreds of bodies arriving each day collected by the military. And across the whole of Spain, officials have extended a stay-at-home declaration and are ordering the disinfection of streets and public areas. At least 2,500 people have died so far and some 40,000 are infected. But Italy has become by far the hardest hit country outside of China. Last week, their death rate actually surpa surpassed that of China's, whose population is more than 20 times greater than Italy. This week, members of the Italian military were able to build an emergency field hospital in the Lombardy region. The field hospital has a functional operating room, three ICU beds, as well as regular patient beds and necessary equipment. The hospital will be run by a group of doctors who arrived recently from Cuba. As of today, 6,280 people have died and nearly 70,000 are infected. The Secretary of Health Surveillance in Brazil announced today the country will follow the recommendations of the World Health Organization and will seek to test a record number of people in that country. Officials are forecasting 22.9 million laboratory and rapid tests in the coming weeks. Brazil's Ministry of Health announced today just more than 2,200 cases with 46 deaths in that country. Those numbers split between the state of Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. The coronavirus crisis is prompting the president to push back the real ID deadline. Under the real ID law, travelers would need the enhanced license by October 1st to board a domestic flight. But President Trump moved the deadline to follow social distancing guidelines and avoid crowds of state's departments of motor vehicles offices. Governors and lawmakers have been pushing for a delay since many states are having trouble processing requests during the coronavirus outbreak. The new deadline will be announced soon. A troubling sight in these times of social distancing, Bear County criminal court defendants in close proximity to one another while waiting to submit to drug screenings. As the defenders Dylan Collier reports, court officials provided an alternative, but they were mostly ignored. <laughs> Just before noon on South Sabina Street, the daily crowd gathers. During this growing coronavirus pandemic, mandatory drug and alcohol screenings have continued for people on probation and those defendants assigned to submit tests by one of the county's specialty courts, raising concerns that the virus could be spread at one of these facilities. The people stacked up along Sabina Street comes at a time when the courthouse that heard their cases in the first place has become a veritable ghost town. The Justice Center remains nearly empty as jury trials have been postponed and dockets reduced to five defendants a day through at least the middle of next month. According to this March 19th memo provided to the defenders by County Court 11 Judge Tommy Stolhansky, defendants were given the option of moving from in-person tests to wearing a drug screening patch. Stolhansky told us today very few people chose the patch option. What's resulted is a concerning sight for anyone who's paid attention to the CDC's recommendations on gatherings of people. A spokeswoman for Recovery Monitoring Services, the company that operates the Sabina Street facility, told us in a statement today, quote, we are taking every measure to limit the number of clients in the location at any given time. RMS will continue to seek their counsel and work in cooperation with Bear County on best practices during this time. For the defenders, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. The court officials have discussed suspending mandatory drug tests for defendants altogether while the pandemic surges on, but no final decisions have been made. All week long, local school districts have been distributing meals to students while they're learning remotely. Today, Edgewood ISD took that initiative one step further. They delivered bags of food and water to about a dozen homes for students who didn't have a way of getting to the distribution sites on their own. Edgewood ISD says it's all part of making sure no kids go hungry. 
We have families that we already know uh, that have been on the list and constantly continuing to need some support like this. So we've been reaching out to them as well. Sometimes they don't have phone, uh, their phone numbers are not good. So we still go out to their homes, even though we can't reach them by phone, we will still make a visit and just to check and see if they're in need of food or if there's something else that they need. Officials, officials with Edgewood ISD said today's donations were made possible with the help of Eagles Flight. Well, it might come as no surprise to hear the coronavirus is affecting Girl Scout cookie sales. A troop in West Virginia says the season started out great, but has since fallen off. They're now turning to virtual sales and then donating those cookies purchased to hospitals. They're also working to help hospitalized children who can't have visitors. So we were going to divide it 27 per hospital and send those with our troop moms that work at those hospitals as a thank you to the staff that are really on the front lines of this. Care boxes um, for children in hospitals who are not able to be with loved ones and have people visit. Life is full of uncertainties and you have to learn to roll with the punches. The troop leader says she's also been making homemade masks for hospital staff during the shortage. Still ahead on the night beat, how you can help a local nonprofit group make sure those in the service industry who find themselves without a job in all this don't go without a meal. Delivery and takeout is still available for those looking to eat out while staying in. But how, how can you keep from germs arriving on your doorstep? The tips to consider coming up next. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Have you ever heard of Great American Takeout Day? Probably not because it's brand new and it was today. Restaurants encourage people to order at least one takeout meal in support of the restaurant industry. The idea came from a group of restaurants like California Pizza Kitchen, Jason's Deli, Torchy's Tacos, in response to a lot of restaurants suffering during this coronavirus pandemic. Participants were asked to post a picture and use the hashtag the great American takeout. The hope was to raise awareness of and encourage people to keep supporting local restaurants. And with more people staying at home during the novel coronavirus pandemic, more people are also ordering their meals to go from restaurants or they're having them delivered. RJ Marquez tells us about a few ways to make sure you leave unwanted germs at the doorstep. It's part of this week's adulting hack, which airs on the KSAT News at 9. One of the safest things you can do is limit the contact you have or not make any contact at all with the delivery person during the handoff. This means paying ahead of time through the phone or through an app if possible. You can then ask the delivery person to leave the food outside your door. Once the food is inside your home, the next thing you can do is take it out of the containers, throw those containers away, and wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. Health experts also say it's best to have an area on your countertop to place the food and wipe down that area with disinfectant. Next, do not grab the food with your hands. Try and use a utensil to move the food to one of your containers and then wash the utensil. If you want leftovers or have ordered extra, it's best to transfer the food to your own container before putting it away. You don't want to keep anything that came from the restaurant in your home. The goal is to make sure the food is not being transferred from packaging materials to your hands. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says there is currently no evidence to support that the virus can be transmitted through food, but keep in mind the National Institutes of Health says the coronavirus can live on cardboard surfaces for 24 hours, stainless steel for two to three days, and on plastic surfaces for up to 72 hours. I'm RJ Marcus. To see more stories like this, watch Case at News at 9, Monday through Friday. Well, if you need to go out for essentials like food or gas, there are ways to keep yourself protected. To reduce your risk, avoid touching surfaces with your fingertips. Instead, use a pen for touch screens, elevator buttons, or light switches. You can also carry tissues with you and use them to grab a doorknob or handrail. Just be sure to throw them away right after using. You may also want to clean your cell phone often. And of course, be sure to wash your hands with soap and water as soon as you can and avoid touching your face. Take a live look outside with live cam right now. 72 degrees out there. I like not seeing a lot of traffic out. Yes, That's a good we sign. We are a little over, what, an hour and a half away from uh, the ordinance going to effect. So. Yeah. yeah. It's a good time. Hey, you know, and I was just, just reading an interesting article. You know, this has impacted our, our lives in so many ways. And the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting, 
the folks who made the Euro model that we always talk about, um, came out with a report indicating the significance of the lack of airport, um, airplane observations we're getting right now in our weather computer models. Because we, get, we use weather balloons, some ground-based data, satellites, and information from aircraft. And while we have a big drop in aircraft in the sky, it may have an adverse effect on some of our computer guidance and numerical models. Interesting stuff. It's just a lot more to look into. 91 was our high temperature today, well above the average of 76. The record being 94, so we were just three degrees shy of the record here in town. We made it to 93 in Catula, mostly just in the mid 80s in the hill country, but Del Rio topped out at 93. Tomorrow's going to be even warmer. 94 the high temperature, and that'll be three degrees shy of a record. Then Thursday and Friday right near 90. So well above average, but a cold front will drop us back down to right near average this time of year. That's not until the upcoming weekend, though. So temperatures outside right now. Already down to 57 Bernie Stage Airfield, 62 in Bulverde, 75 in Floresville, wide ranging temperatures, even 57 in Kerrville, but 72 at the airport in San, San Antonio and Divine at 76. I think most of us, especially along and west of I-35, will make it down into the 50s overnight tonight, where we have this drier air in place. You could get even into the lower 50s or upper 40s. Dry line dropped in today. It stalled out just east of I-35. It does look like it's starting to retreat westward, but I still anticipate us at least in the upper 50s by early tomorrow morning here in San Antonio. Because the dew point, by the way, isn't just a measure of how comfortable or uncomfortable it is, but also an indicator of just how cold or how much temperatures can drop off at night. So our main factor in our weather right now is the big blue H. We're all familiar with the upper level high. Right now it's centered over Mexico, still close enough to really have a big influence and impact on our weather. We'll stay warm as I showed you for the rest of this work week. School week sounds kind of weird calling it that, doesn't it? And as we get into the weekend, we'll have a change. Saturday and Sunday we'll have a change. It's a shift in our pattern. This upper level disturbance should drop a cold front through town and that'll change our temperatures. But as for rain chances, don't get your hopes up. Usually when we see pattern shifts, those can be our opportunities for some good rainfall. Unfortunately here, I think 20 to 30% is our best chance. That would be early Saturday morning. And then again, as we get into next week, Monday, Tuesday, but there's a lot more uncertainty with what the weather pattern is going to be like next week. So we're calling for 56 in the morning tomorrow, sunshine all day, and then making it to 94 for the afternoon high wind becoming southerly at five to 10 and then near 90 Friday and Saturday. We'll have the morning clouds. We're used to those low morning clouds. We'll have those, but they'll break apart. and We'll have some afternoon sunshine. Then we get into the weekend and despite cooler temperatures. I still think a decent amount of sunshine, at least on Saturday by Sunday clouds roll back in and we could see a decent amount of gray in the sky into next week. All right, I'm glad to at least see it cools off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not stuck in this 90s pattern yes. already. Yeah, it's like summer week. right now. Yeah. yeah, it looks great. Thank you so much, Adam. Next on the night beat, the hospitality industry focuses on helping our community, but who is helping those in the service industry? The organization who's taking notice next on the night beat. The coronavirus outbreak has left thousands of people in the hospitality and service industries without jobs here in Texas as hotels and restaurants continue to shut down. Here in San Antonio, there is one nonprofit organization working to make sure laid off service workers and their families don't go hungry. Devin Clark with how it's being done and how you can help. Waking up every morning, making 30 gallons of soup. Um, and then coming over here, banging out lunch, going and buying more product. Local celebrity chef Jason Dady owns six restaurants, so he's used to being busy. But since all San Antonio restaurants have been ordered to close their dining rooms and hotels have been downsizing due to the coronavirus outbreak, his mission has shifted from selling food. How many you need? Two, what can I get you to drink to start with? To providing free meals. We're trying to change the menu every day if we can. It's for the hotel workers. It's for, you know, anyone who is doing anything in a hotel or a restaurant or a bar. We want to make sure that we're feeding them hot meals every day. It's being made possible through an emergency fund set up by Culinaria, a nonprofit organization <laughs> dedicated to supporting the hospitality industry. It's all dependent on how much money we raise. The efforts are well appreciated and for some necessary. If it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't eat today. I haven't been getting no money coming in at all. 
So this helps us eat lunch and dinner um, for all my kids. This is day five of the mission, and so far, more than 600 free meals have been served up here at Alamo Barbecue Company on Grayson. Dady says he plans to continue the mission as long as it takes. Because they're going to need it to, you know, as they start this journey of getting through this. And that was Devin Clark reporting. The Poteet Strawberry Festival, meantime, has new dates. Organizers announced the festival will take place October 31st through November 1st. The Strawberry Festival was set to happen the first weekend of April. It's just one of many events that were scheduled to happen in the coming months but have been postponed because of COVID-19. I'm hoping it's a busy fall. I, I have a feeling it's going to be. I hope yeah. I think so. Up next, in order to stay at home, leading to a chance to do some good in West Virginia. How families are stepping up to the plate for a man's best friend. Oh. Ready to read on KSAT.com. Fiesta still postponed till November, but one local Fiesta Metal Company has figured out a way to keep its business afloat. March, usually a busy month for Mira Metals. Well, with the coronavirus outbreak, owners Natasha and Albert Gonzalez decided to open an online store. They're calling it the Fiesta Shopping Network. You can read the full story on our website. And as millions of Americans spend more time at home, an animal shelter in West Virginia hoping to use the time to reach out for potential foster families. Volunteers didn't even have to get out of their cars to take home a pet. West Virginia will be under a stay at home order and the Charleston Humane Society Hoped bringing pets into homes could help families and share some love with our furry friends. Just another chance to do some good. And as always, we continue to track this latest coronavirus crisis online at KSAT.com. GMSA at 430 in the morning. Good night. Nightline is next.